September as Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Day. Before that, we the day had been declared as Founders Day. What's the difference? <laughs> well, when we say Founders Day, it means the person who founded uh, Ghana. Uh, that was his day. Because after the 21st of September, it's Kwame Nkrumah's birthday, mind you. So you can see the level of misunderstanding that I wrote because people are thinking that Kwame Nkrumah is the founder. And I think the, uh, the Dankwa Busia group has always taken the stand that it cannot be correct. That so um, Kwame Nkrumah didn't... The Nkrumah yeah. was not the founder no. of Ghana. In fact, nobody founded Ghana because it was Gold Coast that was changed on Independence Day to Ghana. But then when you read the historical document, you will see that there was a reference to Ghana long before 1957. But he sure led us to 1957. Yes, that is true. But I'm saying that there is still a misconception, a misunderstanding. First of all, let's understand that the UGCC met in 1947 in Salt Pond. It was, I think, December or so of that year that uh, Akwaji, who was one of the members at the time, where you can see this, so we might refer to as the Big Six, it was he who suggested to Dankwa and the others to say that, hey, I met a young man when I was there in the US. He is now in London. Uh, I think he has a vibrancy and the, person, the right person to come and be the general secretary of UGCC. Because after all, Kwaje was a lawyer practicing. Tankwa was a lawyer that was practicing. Akufado was a lawyer that was practicing. Uh, Pagrat and the rest were businessmen who were looking after their business. None of them has time to go around Ghana and say that they are trying to whip up the enthusiasm of the people to agitate for independence. So they needed somebody who can do the work. And they thought that that was a young man who was the right person. So they sent for him. They paid his passage to come. Kumar did not come by himself. They paid his passage. In fact, when he came, he was an employee of the UGCC. I was being paid salary to do the work. Now, therefore, but the term Ghana was already there. That was being used by Dankwa and the others. And so you cannot say somebody is a founder. I think that's, that is where it's very important for us to understand this. Because I see all the arguments, people are, the see people are saying this and the others are saying that, and I say, no, 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 no. You cannot distort history. History is history. Historically, this is what happened. It was when the misogyny arose between them as to whether uh, self-government soon or self-government now. Nice catchy words, but then soon and now, what does it mean? Now does not mean today. And soon does not mean tomorrow or the day after or 10 years from now. Technically, they all mean the same thing. But being the dictator, the mind of the people, when you say now, it means, oh, look, we are going to kick the white man out, or we are going to take over everything. So he was successful in the bringing the country to independence. And so we have to acknowledge that. Nobody should deny it. Should we make his birthday a national holiday? Well, that is what I believe it is necessary and useful. Uh, look at Martin Luther King. He didn't actually do anything particular in America except that he he moved the blacks and gave them a hope. He is dead. And America acknowledges his day as Martin Luther King Day. So why should we not memorialize the person who had led us to independence? I think it is it's necessary. It should be a holiday. That's the right day to be a holiday. What exactly happened in 1947? Was it the founding of the political party, as in the UGCC? That was the founding of the UGCC. It is those people who met at Salt Pond who took a decision to come together. That's why they call it United Gold Coast Convention. Hmm. The 
other political parties that have been formed in different years, why should we make one political party uh, begin a national holiday? Why should the you, be a the UG, There is no UGCC but as a political party we have today. So let's again wipe our mind clean of that misunderstanding. Is the NPP not coming out? The NPP that? says that they are the successors of that, but it does not make it eat it. I think that's the misunderstanding. They say that they are, that's their origin. But then I also misinterpret and I say that, okay, that's the origin. But Nkrumah was also the general secretary of the UGCC. So that's also the origin of the CVP also. So what do you understand from that argument? Then of course the argument is dead. There's actually no argument. But why should it be a national day then? No, the national day was to say that our ancestors at a particular point in time realize that we can no longer stay under a colonial government and that it was time for us as people indigenous of Africa take the strings of governance into our own hands and govern ourselves. So we need to organize ourselves in order to tell the colonial government to go. And that's exactly what they did. That was exactly what they did. And you remember that events were triggered by the occurrence that occurred on the 24th February of 48. You might even say that it's unrelated in the sense that the ex-servicemen who had returned from Burma realized that they were virtually being robbed. Here are people who volunteered they went to Burma, they went to North Africa, and they fought with the British against the Germans and the Japanese. And those who went, the white people who were in Britain, were well looked after. And here are our own soldiers, they were completely ignored. And so they were marching to Christiansburg Castle to, to see the governor with a petition. I say, hey, you can't discriminate against us. We also deserve to be looked after because we preserve the British Empire. And then, of course, Chris Chrissy became crazy and shot the three soldiers at the crossroads. And of course, it inflamed the sentiments of the people. And then the riot set in. The European shots were looted. Of course, the Korean government at that time was thinking that, ah, hey, these UGCC people, they are the cause of, they must have stared the people to do this. So they went and collected them and locked them up. They couldn't prosecute them in the sense that they don't have the evidence. In fact, Pao Willie would tell, laugh at you and say, you know, they sent me to Wa, and they gave me to the district commissioner and say, give me a bungalow to stay inside. They say, whatever I want, I can ask for it. They say, we don't know whether you were involved in, but at least for safety, it's better we do that. So they collected them and locked them up. 28th February, interestingly, is the day that we commemorate. It's not a national holiday. Yeah, it is a commemoration day, that's yeah. true. Why can't August 4 also be a day that we commemorate? Well, there's nothing wrong in commemorating it. There's also nothing wrong in declaration of a holiday. Uh, in fact, the argument against the holiday will be like me and others who say that there are too many holidays, that we should just do away with some of them. That, would, to me, rather would be the argument, mm -hmm. is to say that let it be a commemoration day rather than a national holiday. There's also another side of the argument. Nkrumah was not available on that day. That is also true. So wouldn't we be taking him out as a founding father, as part of the founders, if we're adding, including him and adding all the others who also contributed? Well, you know, someone actually used a particular terminology which I thought was very good. He said, let's call it a hero's day. He says, instead of talking about founder's day, why don't we rather call it a hero's day? So it's a question of the heroes who have all been involved, which of course will also include the three, the soldiers who were shot, because they were also part 
from the heroes. Then we need to choose a neutral date then. No, no, you don't get in the picture. What I'm saying is that if you say it's the hero's day, mm -hmm. then it does not matter what day or so it is. Because all the people who are heroes will be celebrated. Mm. Isn't that what we do on 6th of March? 6th of March is actually the Independence Day. That was the day, the birthday of Ghana. So you cannot But we still that. acknowledge all the people who contributed to No, the no, 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 no. That's a different, a clear distinction. You see, to commemorate your birthday is a different thing from other events which will happen in your lifetime. And so the 6th of March is actually the birthday of Ghana. It's the Independence Day. You saw that that, that was in the Republic Day, that the day that Ghana was declared a republic, when the queen was no longer queen of Ghana. That also is there. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that one can raise an argument and say that, why do we have so many holidays in terms of cost to the nation? How much does the nation lose for a day? Because we've even developed a bad habit, whereby if the day falls on a Saturday or a Sunday, then we declare the Monday also as a holiday. I don't know where all this came from. But these are matters maybe we should do a little bit of rethinking about and say that, okay, if it is Saturday, let it be Saturday. If it is Sunday, let it be Sunday. There's no reason why you should add an extra day because in all that productivity is lost. And actually billions of cities is lost to the nation because of that alone. So that to me would be the argument that is worth debating. What do you make of the intention of the president now uh, to go to parliament get to the subsidiary legislation and make these holidays uh, law, really, because all this while we've been using the executive instruments to declare the days as holidays. I suppose, you see, the reason to make the thing a law by legislation is just to gain to change this whole idea of one person comes and then he takes a decision as president and then we do it rather than something that is the law. And therefore, you cannot just come and change it. You remember the argument about, uh, what's his name? Uh, Flagstaff House. Mm. The person who built it gave it the one name. And then somebody else came and, and changed it mm -hmm. to Flagstaff House. Because there was no legislation guarding it. Therefore, it just took an executive decision and it was done. It is to prevent things of that nature from happening. Because those who changed to Flagstaff House misunderstood what Flags House meant. That was actually the army headquarters, which in Krumah, instead of staying in the castle, moved to. The castle was still seat of government, but he moved to Flagstaff House, which was actually the army headquarters. Mm. And therefore, the army is no longer there. There was no reason why you should have called the place the Flagstaff House. If you want to, if you have the means to party and remember, but of course, you're going to do that on the 4th of March as well. So, the ability. On the 4th of August? Oh, of, uh, uh, yeah, all of it. All the numerous holidays. For example, we are. 70% of the people are Christian. But when uh, the Muslims are celebrating their festival, we all get a holiday. So, you ask, I ask the same question. I say, what do you do? <laughs> when they are praying and slaughtering their sheep, what do you do? It's, it's, you, you can see the ridiculousness of. Some of this matter to be mm. debate, uh, what debating them. What, what would you be up to? My uh, concept of holiday is that I sit in the house and I don't go out. I, I read and if maybe play around the garden or something like that. Or you know, in the old days, I would visit friends. These days, I seldom do that. <laughs> but Enjoy the holiday then. Take, I'm sure I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a good rest. Thank you for your time. Yeah, all right. Stay blessed, my dear.